This lesson covers IP addresses and MAC addresses. An IPv4 address is 32 bits, and typically you'll see this broken up into four bytes, or four 8-bit descriptions. This is commonly written as something called dotted quad format. So those four 8-bit numbers are converted to decimal. This means each of those dotted quad parts can be up to 255 in value. If you started the calculator app and looked at eight ones in binary and converted it to decimal, you get 255. Here's the Windows calculator. I'm in the programmer mode. I select binary and just type all ones. And it's showing me the decimal value is 255. This is a useful trick. When you're dealing with IPv4, often you are dealing with the binary and then the decimal conversion. So if you're ever trying to work out, well, what should the decimal be? A great way is just in binary mode in the calculator, just put in what you believe the binary part should be, and it will show you the decimal amount. This is useful when IP works at that binary level, but as mentioned, I operate in the dotted quad, i.e. decimal. So often I do have to convert between the binary and the decimal values, especially when I'm looking at gateways and subnets. IP addresses are assigned to a machine through the IP stack. Every operating system has this today. Windows, Linux, Windows Client, Windows Server. I remember when I started out in IT over 20 years ago, IP wasn't a standard. I was a VAX VMS systems administrator and we actually used DECnet OSI. That seven layer model I previously spoke about, that's how machines spoke to each other. And then I remember there were actually IP configurations and solutions added later on, but it wasn't a core part of the operating system. Today, everything talks IP. The internet works on IP. Now, if the IP address is assigned to a machine through the IP stack, i.e. it's not a real physical value, it's logical, I assign it, then there must be something truly unique about machines to make sure there isn't a clash on the physical network fabric, i.e. Ethernet. And so a machine, or more specifically the network card, has something called a media access control address or MAC address. This is hard coded into every network card at the fabrication time. So the manufacturers of the network cards, they get a certain range of these MAC addresses that are governed by a central body. Every network card is stamped with one of these. Now a MAC address is 48 bits. That is commonly written as six 8-bit numbers, but not in decimal this time in hexadecimal. So it's still 8-bit parts, but it's written in hex. So there were two hexadecimal characters. So once again, in the calculator, it does show those hex values. So I can see here the decimal is 252. The hex is FC. So the first character is the first four bits. The second character is the last four. So if I was to clear this, if it was all ones, it's an F. If it's all zeros, well, it's a zero. Because when I'm looking at binary, the first one is one, then two, then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And they're just added together. If it's one, it means it's set and that number exists. So if I just did one, you can see it's a value of one. If I did one, zero, then you can see it's two. Likewise, if I do that one is four, that one is eight, and so on. Next one will be 16. So that's how binary converts to decimal. So every machine has a MAC address, and you can see this. I'm gonna use a CMD utility called ipconfig. Now I actually have a PowerShell window open, but I can run executables in here as well. So if I run ipconfig slash all, you can see it's showing me my host name, the domain I'm part of, and if I look down there, this is actually a virtual machine. And so the hypervisor is generating what is a physical address. So you can see this is my MAC address. If I look to an actual physical machine, i.e. my desktop, you can see I actually have two network cards and each network card has its own MAC address. It is the MAC address how machines actually talk to each other. So because the MAC is the physical address, it uses that MAC address to actually pass the packets. Remember, IP is at that layer three, 
underneath that, we have kind of those physical layers and the data link layer. So it is the physical layer where I actually have the MAC address, the data link layer. So between those, that actually enables the traffic to pass between them. Think about delivering a letter. I'm going to use the house analogy throughout this entire module. If I want to deliver a letter to someone, I have to know what house it is. Where is that house? Now, as human beings, we can work out where a house is. If I'm at house number eight and I want to deliver a letter to house number two on the same street, I know I can just walk up the road and I'll find it. But let's assume we didn't know that. That logic did not exist. They weren't in a nice sequential order. To find it, I would need some absolute value, like a GPS, global positioning system. I know the house number, I know the street, but I have to convert that to something absolute, the GPS value. And that's the same for IP. IP, like the house address, is logical. To communicate, I have to know the physical address, the actual MAC address. Now, in the letter analogy, you could imagine, well, I arrive at the street, and I could stand at the corner of the street and shout out, hey, what's the GPS address for house number two? And then house number two would shout out back, hey, my GPS coordinates are X, Y, Z. I would type that in and then follow that and get to the house. On the networking side, it actually works the same way. There's something called the address resolution protocol. If I want to communicate to another machine, I only communicate directly when it's a machine on my local subnet, i.e. portion of the network. And what happens is something called an ARP request is sent out, is broadcast to the entire network I'm on, my subnet, and then the machine that has that IP address, because it's listening, will send back its MAC address. So for example, if I was to try and ping a machine, you can see that's working. Ping is like an echo request. Hey, can you hear me? And it says, yep, and it bounces back my packet. But the way that actually worked is before it could talk to it, it had to find out its MAC address. So let's prove that. I'm going to use the ARP command, and I'm first of all going to delete all of the entries. There's a cache, so that every time I talk to a machine, I don't have to rediscover its MAC address. Because the way IP works is there is a constant stream of millions of packets for any stream of communication. So it caches those entries, because they really don't change very often. So I want to delete my cache. Now you see it's erroring. And it's erroring because this requires elevation. This is just a core part of Windows. This is user access control. So even though I'm an administrator, by default, my session has normal user rights. So I have to elevate. So I'm gonna close this and start it in an elevated mode. I'm going to shift right click. There you can see run as administrator. I'm gonna confirm yes. Now it starts it with those elevated permissions. You can see it says administrator colon. So it's an important point. Another way to do this would have been to right click the start button. And now I have an admin version. This shows PowerShell on my machine. That's because if I look at my taskbar settings, I've configured it to replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell. If you don't like that, you could turn that off and it would show me a command prompt instead of PowerShell. From here, I'm going to delete every entry in my ARP cache. Now, if I look at my ARP cache, you can see there's already entries in it. Now I just deleted them all. Well, it's because it's constantly communicating. As quick as I can delete them, there's background tasks, there's things happening, which means it adds entries. But in my case, I want to ping 10.7.173.10. And that worked. If I look at my ARP cache now, you see it added an entry for 10.7.173.10. It did a broadcast on the local subnet. Who is IP address 10.7.173.10? That machine, because it sees all of those requests, saw that ARP request, it then sent an ARP response, which contained its MAC address. This machine then cached it, which then enabled it to actually communicate at that data link level.